Hey y'all, this is uh, Lee Clausen. Some of you know me as L.E. Clausen. I, uh, not that it means anything, but uh, I was went through with initials up till the time, uh, about the time I got saved, and then uh, I started using the name Lee Clausen. But anyway, that doesn't, that doesn't mean anything. The, the real name that, that we're about to, today is uh, the name of Jesus and what he's doing in our lives. So thank you, Jesus is the Gate Ministry, for um, allowing me to do this, the simulcast, and, uh, and also to the rest of the world, if you will, because this is on YouTube. Uh, but thank you very much. And uh, you know what, the, these, these are perilous times, aren't they? And uh, who had ever thought a few months ago that we would be going, um, doing this? But here we are, nevertheless, here we are. But you know, it's just like uh, Kirk Cameron, uh, the, the, was the actor, uh, or is the actor. He, he was stated uh, saying that this is the greatest time for us to be alive. And uh, you know, I agree with that wholeheartedly. This is the greatest time for us as, as born again believers to be alive, for us to, to uh, be enabled and anointed to, to give away Jesus uh, to the through the ones that are sent to us, as Proverbs 22 says, that, that he gives us words of, of certainty and excellence, that we'll be able to give those words and that truth to the ones that are sent to us. So, you know, uh, witnessing is, is not an option. Uh, as Pastor Bullock says, it's a mandate. And we, as we live our lives out for Jesus, we shine. And, and we reflect Christ and who he is in our life. And hopefully there's power there uh, that people will be able to pick up on that, on, that, uh, on that light that's in us. Jesus said, so let your light, in Matthew, the book of Matthew, said, so let your light so shine before men that they'll see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Uh, actually, I'd, I'd like to start today uh, uh, I'm going to read 2 Chronicles 7, 14, and then I'm going, to, I'm going to pray. But in the meantime, right now, I'm going to ask everybody out there that, to get a, get a little piece of paper and a, and a pencil or a pen and just uh, write these scriptures down and stick them in your Bible because there, sometimes you'll run across these things and you're not even really thinking about it, and uh, they really pack a punch. But we're going to read from 2 Chronicles 7, 14. This verse I know has been repeated a lot over the years and especially during the uh, during this virus time that a lot of people are, are reciting that and, and meditating on it. But I, I just want to read it because there's there's scriptures that follow that I think that are very significant. So I will go not only in 14 but 15 and 16. Second Chronicles 7 14. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. And then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and I will heal their land. Emphasis on healing our land. Not only do we need healing for our bodies and our families, but our land needs healed from chaos and from uh, transgression. Verse 15, now my eyes will be opened. God is talking to us. And now my eyes will be opened and my ears will be attentive to the prayer that's made in this place. For now I have chosen and sanctified this house that my name may be there forever and that my eyes and my heart will be there perpetually or forever. He's saying here that, that, um, that he has chosen and sanctified this house. You see, we, we are updated now uh, after the work of Christ. Th this is the house that he's talking about. The place where he wants to dwell. That he, he has actually has chosen us. Jesus said in John 15, he says, You didn't choose me, but I chose you. And appointed you that you should go and bear fruit. My fruit. The fruit of my kingdom. And that your fruit will never end. I mean, that's so powerful to know that the things that he has for us in our life 
as we bear fruit to him, they will never end. I'm going to just pray right now. In the name of Jesus and by the blood of the Lamb, Lord, I, I ask for your Holy Spirit to come to us even right now. I'm asking for your spirit and your presence to take over our lives. God, and not only that you would heal us, body, soul, and spirit, but God, you'd heal our families. And you heal those that, Lord, they're the ones that are sent to us. Even though that there's social distancing, that we, we, through your Holy Spirit, can reach out to others and give away that hope, Jesus, that you are giving into us. That you will enable us and anoint us right now. That you, that you allow us, Lord, to serve you in this capacity and at this time. For such a time as this, you've raised these things up that we as your church, that we can shine, that we as your servants, that we can shine for you and reflect you, Jesus Christ, for exactly who you are. But Holy Spirit, come and give us the anointing and this power and this wisdom that we so desperately need at this time. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Uh, a few weeks ago, I ran across uh, some scripture uh, in Psalms 80. And um, I was taken back as, as I read this. I'd read Psalms 80 several times. In fact, a good friend of mine uh, wrote a, a song. Uh, my friend Bill Brown wrote the song out of the first three verses. Uh, where it says, give ear, O shepherd of Israel, uh, and restore us. But I, today what I'd like to do is go down to the verse 14 of Psalms 80. Verse 14 is stated by saying, Return, we beseech you, O God of hosts. Look down from heaven and see, and visit this vine and the vineyard which your right hand has planted, and the branch that you have made strong for yourself. It is burned with fire, and it is cut down. They perish at the rebuke of your countenance. Let your hand be upon the man of your right hand, and upon the son of man who you have made strong for yourself. And then we will not turn back from you. Revive us, and we will call upon your name. Restore us, O Lord God of hosts, and cause your face to shine, and we will be saved. As I read Psalms 80 here a few days ago, I was really taken back by, uh, it, it just seems like this psalm almost came alive for, for such a time as this, for these days we're going through. That the vineyard which he has planted is not only in this land, but it's also the kingdom of God. And the branch that you've made strong for yourself has been burned with fire. You know, we live in a chaotic world, not only uh, in this country, uh, but in other countries. Uh, there's a ministry that, that I, I, I give an ear to a fair amount, it's called Voice of the Martyrs. And Voice of the Martyrs uh, really uh, brings to light the persecuted church that's in other countries over the globe. China, uh, Nigeria, different parts of Africa, India, Malaysia, and North Korea. Just, just the name of the few most persecuted as far as, as far as Christianity and the name of Jesus. But these are the countries that are more, more persecuted. And the things and the actions that are going on in China is just absolutely incredible. Uh, the way that the, the Church of Jesus Christ is persecuted. But it, what's an amazing phenomenon about that, that it is healthy. Because of the persecution, uh, people are getting saved in droves every day. And the Church of Jesus Christ is growing in leaps and bounds. How much does that speak, speaks to us in America today? that we so desperately need that same revival that is going on in other countries. Where the Spirit, this Holy Spirit of God is stirring and moving in people and drawing them to come into the kingdom and to go deeper into the kingdom. 
You know, going deeper in the kingdom is something I think that, that, that we've kind of lost our grip on uh, in America today. Because, because you see, deep in the kingdom, is, there's more available as far as, as, as the things of God, as the things that we really desire in our life, love, truth, and happiness, and fulfillment. These things are only found in the kingdom of God. And if you will, these are the things that we need very much in our lives, that we need to go deeper and to experience Jesus Christ more than we ever have. For in it is happiness and all the things we could ever want or need. Jesus said in Matthew 6, to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added to you. But I'd like to read out of uh, Matthew 21. Uh, this is a parable of Jesus Christ that he told in the 21st chapter of Matthew, starting with the, the 31st verse. Sorry. <laughs> okay, Matthew 21, verse 33. These are the words of Jesus Christ. Hear another parable. There was a certain landowner who, owned, who planted a vineyard, and he set a hedge around it, and he dug a wine press, and he built a tower. And he leased it to vine dressers, and then he went into a far country. And when the vintage time drew near, he sent his servants to the vine dressers that they might receive its fruit. And the vine dressers took his servants. He, they beat one, they killed one, and they stoned another. And again, he sent another servant, more than the first, and they did likewise to them. Then last of all, he sent his son to them, saying, they will respect my son. But when the vine dressers saw the son, they said among themselves, this is the heir. Come, let us kill him and seize his, his inheritance. And they caught him and they cast him out of the vineyard and they killed him. Therefore, when the owner of the vine dresser comes, what will he do to those vine dressers? And the Pharisees answered him and they said, he will destroy those wicked men miserably and he will lease his vineyard to other vine dressers who will render to him the fruits in their season. Jesus said to them, did you never read in the scriptures that has said in, in Psalms, the stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. And this was the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our lives. And of course, Jesus Christ, when he was referring to this scripture out of Psalms, was talking about himself. He is the stone which the builders have rejected. Verse 34 again. Therefore, I say to you, the kingdom of God will be taken from you and given to a nation bearing the fruits of it. And whoever falls on this stone will be broken. But on whomever it falls, it will grind him to powder. You see, it's so very important at this, at this time. Jesus is kind of giving a, a little dispensation reference here. That if you fall on this stone, that you'll be saved and healed. But if that stone falls on you, it'll destroy you. Now is the time, beloved, for us to hunker down, if you will, and to get in our prayer closets and to seek the face of God. And then we'll know exactly and we'll know assuredly where we are in Christ and that he will enable us to go deeper into the kingdom. Jesus said in Luke uh, 22. I'm just going to read from Luke 22 right now. Luke 22. I just want to stress that. Verse 29. Luke 22. Verse 29. I can get to Luke. There he is. I'm going to read from verse 14. This as uh, the the. The uh, text of, of what Jesus is saying here is talking about the last days. And he's giving reference that when we are brought before uh, um, court,
courts and, in, and when we're arrested for the sake of Christ, he's saying in, in verse 14, he says, therefore settle it in your hearts not to meditate beforehand on what you will answer when you are taken before authority, authorities. Jesus said for, in verse 15, for I will give you a mouth and a wisdom which all your adversaries are not able to contradict or resist. You will then be betrayed by even parents and brothers and relatives and friends. And they will send some of you to your death. And you will be hated by all for my name's sake. But not a hair of your head shall be lost. But in your patience, possess your souls. I just want to uh, reiterate that. That not a hair of your head shall be lost. Of course, now I'm follically impaired, so... Uh, what he's talking about actually taking care of us. But in verse 19, he says, in your patience, possess your souls. In other words, don't get all bent out of shape about these things that will happen. But realize that I am taking care of you and that you will embrace these things that I've put into your life for you to be a light and an answer to those that are accusing you. In chapter 22 of Luke, I'm going to give reference back to that scripture again. In Luke 22, the next chapter, in verse 29, Jesus says, and I have bestowed upon you a kingdom as my father has bestowed one on me, Be meaning that bestowing means that he's, he's giving us an incredible honor and gifting of who he is. And he's lavishing on, on us his kingdom. He's pouring out on us his kingdom. And he is honoring us and putting into us, inside of us, his kingdom. Jesus says, the kingdom of God is within you. If you know me, if you have received me, the kingdom of God is within you. So going back to uh, Matthew 21, Jesus said that, that the, the vineyard will be taken from you and it will be given to a nation. I'm going to read that again in uh, Matthew 21, 43. Therefore I say to you, the kingdom of God will be taken from you and given to a nation bearing the fruits of it. What is this nation? Well, it's you and me. Who are the vine dressers that, that, will, that will inherit the kingdom when he destroys the original vine dressers? Those vine dressers that he's going to trust to bear the fruits in their season. Why, it's you. It's absolutely you. Because God trusts you. He knows who you are. Down to your toenails. He knows exactly everything about you and he knows that he can trust you with his kingdom. But in your patience, possess your souls and seek my face and I will heal your land. I'm going to go to, uh, I'm going to sum this up by uh, going to Isaiah 30 today. We're going to turn to Isaiah, the 30th chapter. And to me, this is a, I, I go to the scripture a lot because uh, it really speaks to me in my life. I remember originally reading this and I was, I was just amazed at the power that's in, in the scriptures and in God's word. Isaiah 30, verse 15, for thus says the Lord God, the Holy One of Israel, in returning and in rest, you will be saved. And in quietness and confidence shall be your strength. But some of you said, no, for we will not, for we will flee on horses. And God says, therefore, you will flee on horses and you will try to ride on swift horses. But those who pursue you will be swift. One thousand shall flee at the threat of one and at the threat of five, you will flee until you are left as a pole on the top of a mountain, on a banner, on a hill. But then the Lord says, therefore, I will wait that I may be gracious to you. 
And therefore I will be exalted that you that I will have mercy on you. For the Lord God is the God of justice. But blessed are all those who wait for him. I'm going to jump down to uh, verse 20. And even though the Lord gives you the bread of adversity and the water of affliction, yet your teachers will not be moved into a corner anymore. But yes, your eyes will see your teachers and your ears will hear a word behind you saying, this is the way, walk in it. And whenever you turn to the right or turn to the left, you will also defile the covering of your graven images in silver and the ornament of your molded image, your gods, you will throw them away and say, this is an unclean thing. And you will say to them, get away from me. You see, it's time for us to take our, our gods, our piddly little things that we have worshiped other than Jesus, and that we cast them out of our lives as an unclean thing. But you see, Jesus is waiting that he'll be gracious to us. And he wants so much to speak to us and to say, here is the way to walk in it. I think that's the message that, that uh, he's giving to us as believers and to non-believers. And if you're a non-believer today, or if you do not know where you go when you die, I'm going to ask you to pray this prayer with me. So if you'd bow your head, or, or if you're look, looking at me, of course you're going to have to be looking at me from a screen. I want to ask you just to, just to bow down before that, that screen, whatever that is, whether it's your phone or TV or laptop. I'm going to ask you to, to repeat this prayer with me. Lord Jesus Christ, forgive me of my sin. Forgive me of everything that I've done wrong not only to other people, but most of all to you. Cleanse me from my sin with your shed blood. Right now I open my heart and I open my life and I ask you to come in and to give me your kingdom. I know that you love me and right now I receive you and that right now this moment I am born again by the blood of Jesus Christ and no one can take it from me. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus is the gate. And thank you, other believers and new believers. You know, this, this is hard times, but you know what? We may be a, a square peg through a round hole, but he's going to get us through. So just know that his healing and his restoration is for you today. And we pray for you as Jesus is the gate. I'm speaking on behalf of the church here that we want to pray for you. I'm going to ask that, that you call the church if you feel the effect of the power of the Holy Spirit of this message, that you call the church and get prayer. So thank you. Bless your hearts. And uh, if I don't see you on this earth, I'll see you in heaven. Amen.